Good evening, graduates and guests, and welcome to Sprottshaw College's 2021 virtual graduation. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge where I'm broadcasting from, which is on the traditional ancestral unceded territory of the Coast Salish nations of Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish nations and the respective nation territories where our campuses are located across the province of British Columbia. Whether you're watching locally here in BC or across the world in a different time zone, we're glad you can join us. We know that this year has been cha a challenging one to say the least, but our graduates did it and are ready to celebrate their achievements tonight. With this year's virtual graduation, we'll be joined by all the graduating classes in BC along with some special guests to celebrate together. Without further ado, please welcome your graduates.
Graduates, guests, family pets and toddlers that are watching from home with us, please join us as we start the evening with our national anthem. I love unfinished things, the bookmark set between closed pages, the field that waits for seed. Canada is a place like that, a history incomplete, a traveler turning around and wondering at the distance gone, the distance yet to go. What was there, Canada? What is ever there on a country's road, but times when we were glorious and times of things no one should have done? Our anthem understands, words of pride with notes of mourning, and the music of resolve to finish and turn towards the road ahead. Here is a place to say, we go on, not as before, and so keep faith with the best of what we are. O oh Canada, it is a complex love that keeps us together, and all the more true love for that. Ka ka na da Congratulations, you've made it. And I'm not just talking about your graduation this year. I mean, you've made it through in the last 14 months, a once in a lifetime, in fact, a once in probably four or five generations major event and crisis. And you've come out as a graduate. I wanna congratulate you on this because we had a choice. One of the choices, of course, in times of crisis is just to react. But instead, you made the choice to respond. During this time of crisis, change and upheaval, you made a decision to improve and better yourself and move into a new career direction. And that's an incredible achievement. In fact, that capacity and that resilience is something you can continue to bring with you into your career and in your lifetime. It's a muscle that you've now developed. Many years ago, I had a mentor by the name of Jay Conrad Levinson who wrote the best-selling series of books called Guerrilla Marketing, sold over 25 million copies in his lifetime. And I asked Jay about what it took to become a successful writer and how he channeled and found his inspiration, and he laughed at me. He said, Shane, I look at writing and being an author as a job. He says, every morning, it's about a daily discipline of no matter how I feel, to get up and go to work. So every day he would write for two hours. Sometimes he would just look at the cup on his desk because he had no inspiration or ideas and start writing. But eventually, by starting, by making that choice to take that first step, he was able to then begin to open up his creative capacities and become one of the best-selling authors of all time as far as business books go. 
And why I share this is this is a lesson from him I brought into my life as an author and a professional speaker and trainer. And that is that the biggest part of any successful journey is to start. And so once again, I want to congratulate all of you during this crazy time of crisis and transition for making the choice to boldly start on a new career direction. Now I'd like to introduce Mr. Victor Tassan. Victor Tassan is the president of Sprottshaw College. He brings with him more than 20 years experience in leadership and management in the private education sector, including the development, strategic planning, and management of overall college operations. He is recognized for his operational and leadership excellence. Mr. Tassan has a proven history of building successful and sustainable organizations. Please welcome the president of Sprottshaw College, Mr. Victor Tassan. Welcome. Graduates, parents, family, faculty, friends, and guests to this, our 118th graduation celebration. My name is Victor Tizan, and it is my privilege to be able to share this milestone with you and to be able to address and pay tribute to our 2021 graduating class. Graduates, you may not realize the significance of today, but in the years to come, you will realize that completing a post-secondary college program during this time was a life-changing achievement. Your family, your friends, and your Sprottshaw community have witnessed your efforts and your dedication, and your perseverance as you navigated through an extraordinary and challenging time. With pride, we join you this evening to celebrate and applaud your accomplishments. Know that you are now also part of a much larger and greater community. As the 118th graduating class of Sprottshaw College, you are joining a proud and storied tradition of over 100,000 alumni. Our college has persevered through the Great Depression, several economic recessions, two world wars, geopolitical strife, and numerous health and environmental pandemics. All while always looking ahead and planning for tomorrow we know will be led by graduating future leaders. You are such leaders. I want to take a moment to share a few examples from our history and to highlight some pioneers who came before you and charted their own paths while also helping shape our society at large. While many are aware of our beginning in 1903, many may not know that in the 1920s, after Giuliano Marconi had invented the radio, Sprottshaw, through its radio and telegraph program, offered its Vancouver school launched BC's very first ever radio station. A decade later, facing the critique of her would-be book publishers because of her illegible handwriting, world-renowned artist Emily Carr chose to overcome the obstacles that were put before her by enrolling in a typing program at Sprottshaw's Victoria School. A little later, in the 1940s, after graduating from the Sprottshaw School of Commerce and Radio in Vancouver, Jack Cullen went on to preside over the Vancouver Airways for more than 50 years with his legendary radio show. Another graduate from that same period at Sprottshaw School, Ernie Rose, after learning that Seattle would soon have its first TV station on the air, built BC's first video receiver in 1947 using warp surplus radar equipment. This later led Ernie to also create one of Vancouver's very first TV stations in the 1950s. Moving forward, in 2001, Sprottshaw became the first private college in Canada to be granted the right to offer practical nursing education, and today, Many of those graduates, in addition to so many others from all over our healthcare offerings, have become part of our revered and celebrated healthcare heroes. We count amongst our graduates not only the nurse and healthcare worker, but also the entrepreneur, the craftsperson, the support worker, the educator, the administrator, and the business person. The reality is that all Sprachaw graduates have and will make a difference. For just like the few great Canadians mentioned here, including Jack, Ernie, and Emily, as a Sprottshaw graduate, 
The determination and vision that brought you to this moment today will prepare you well for a future of your making. If you ever needed proof that you can, then today is that proof. Graduates, you may not realize it, but this journey has changed who you were, who you are, and who you will become. Your education, the relationships you have built, and the interactions you have had over the course of your studies will impact and influence who you will be for the rest of your life. Even more impactful though, is the timing of your education with respect to world developments and current global events. In our lifetime, there has been no period of time or period of study that compares to the past year. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed all aspects of life, from how we communicate, to how we socialize, to even how we learn. Simple pleasures we took for granted, such as seeing family, hugging a friend, attending a class in person, or even participating in our favorite sports or activities were lost or altered. Sadly, so many have suffered physically and mentally or experienced human loss at the hand of the coronavirus pandemic. And to those, my heartfelt condolences. However, as our world slowly opens, I want you to recognize and remember what was once taken for granted and to realize that every moment in life provides a cherishable moment. It provides us with an opportunity to appreciate what we have, who we are with, and the freedoms that come with this. The human spirit is resilient. This past year, more than any other we have ever known, has demonstrated this. It has also shown that life always moves forward, that learning never stops, and that we are stronger than we give ourselves credit for. More importantly, that we are stronger together and we can make meaningful change when we work together. This past year also awoke us to the harsh reality of racism and prejudice that exists so dominantly in our world. Sadly, Far too many events, often daily, demonstrate the challenges, hardship, hurt, and sometimes even death inflicted on our BIPOC and LGBTQ2 communities globally. In our own country, we finally face the true reality of the residential school system and the absolute horror and atrocities our Indigenous population faced and carry with them still to this day. This reality and more so, the awareness and acknowledgement of it bring truth. By committing to learning about the emotional and physical suffering that generations of Indigenous people suffered through and continue to suffer from, and by recognizing the aberration that was the residential school system, we can finally support reconciliation and play a role in healing the deep-rooted scars impacting far too many. Education brings truth, education brings change, and education and empathy can bring reconciliation. Graduates, the timing of your education is a time of growing change. You embraced education at a time of great global and social upheaval. But because of this, and by opening up your minds inside and outside of the classroom, you have the opportunity to have an incredible impact not only in your professions, but more importantly, on the cultures of your organizations and the social fabric of our society. Learning is not simply what we receive in a classroom or from a textbook. It is the culmination of all the experiences learned combined with worldly events that provide true education. Your education occurred during a time when people all around the globe were uniting and standing up to what is wrong and demonstrating the courage to speak out and to say enough is enough. It is a time we are acknowledging that we are all human and equal. We are acknowledging that racism exists and continues to plague our world. And most notably, irrespective of race, religion, or color, more so because of the beauty that is diversity that we must stand together, united, to fight the inequalities and injustices that exist. 
Mahatma Gandhi once said, it is easy to stand in the crowd, but it takes courage to stand alone. To all who have demonstrated the courage to share stories of racism, or to stand up for what is right and just, or to help those in need, I offer my deepest respect and admiration. Nelson Mandela wrote, No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin, or his background, or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human spirit than its opposite. As human beings, we share the ability to show compassion and to be empathetic. These traits are what make us human. And now, more than ever, it is critical that we demonstrate these, that each of us strive to embrace the beauty of humanity and work towards being the best person we can be. Only through this can we create and embody real change and foster a meaningful impact in our careers and society at large. Graduates, when you look back at your graduating year, you will realize it was not about what you missed out on, but instead what you were a part of. Our first impression is often what we have lost. But the resilience of the human spirit is more about what we have done and what we have overcome. Your graduation year is a testament to the latter. It is a time of strength, a time where you chose possible, and it will be a time where we made the world a better place because of the actions we carried out. Moreover, realize that your life experiences in the past 12 months academic, social, and worldly, have prepared you to move forward in your careers in a holistic way. They have fostered growth in you personally and professionally, allowing you the opportunity to drive change and to be valued members of the global community. Your experiences have prepared you to move from simply attaining a job to building a career. Education changes us. The change begins the minute we make the decision to enroll in a study and continues throughout and long past the length of the program. The further we immerse ourselves, the more we come to understand how much there is to learn. The more we learn, the more we grow and change. Graduates, who you are today is not who you were when you first began this journey. You have earned something of immeasurable value, something that can never be taken from you. You have earned a new understanding, and with this knowledge and your new credential, you now embark on a new and exciting journey. Graduates, as you move forward, remain resilient and continue to be courageous. When you interact with people, always choose compassion. And when you are faced with obstacles and hurdles, look for opportunities and always choose possible. When life presents those struggles, look back at today and remember. Remember you will overcome because it is those exact same traits that you now possess that led you here to this moment and they will continue to lead you forward. But for tonight, celebrate, revel in this moment and recognize your accomplishments. For this is your day and you have earned it. Congratulations. Class of 2021. Thank you, Victor. I'd like to now introduce our keynote speaker, Krista Thompson. Krista is a passionate and visionary leader who cares deeply about the lives of young people. She is the CEO of Covenant House Vancouver, Western Canada's largest privately funded organization serving youth facing and at risk of homelessness. A graduate of BCIT School of Business, Krista moved to the nonprofit sector after more than a decade working in finance. Since joining Covenant House as the CEO in 2006, Krista has led the organization through its largest period of growth, overseeing 230 employees, four times revenue growth, and was instrumental in raising over 200 million for new programs to help youth at Covenant House gain lifelong independence. Krista holds the Institute of Corporate Directors designation, was a 2015 YWCA Women of Distinction Award winner, and was Business in Vancouver's 2015 CEO of the Year in the Registered Charities category. Krista was named the Vancouver Business Improvement Association's Outstanding Individual in 2018 
and is a board member of the Caritable Continuing Care Society, a past member of the International Ethics Committee, and a past chair of the Canadian Council of the Association of Fundraising Professionals. She enjoys skiing, reading, travel, and spending time with her family in her spare time. Please welcome our keynote speaker this evening, Krista Thompson. My name is Krista Thompson, and I'm the CEO of Covenant House Vancouver. And on behalf of all of our young people, our staff, and our board of directors, I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to all of you on your graduation. This is a special day, and I am so filled with pride for you. Graduating is a very big deal anytime, but to do it during a pandemic and this crazy year, even more so. You have persevered because inside of you is the character, the commitment, and the drive to succeed. You are capable, you're capable of overcoming challenges, tackling problems and working very hard to accomplish your goals. Some of you will know that Covenant House supports young people who are experiencing homelessness. And in many ways, they're just like you. They are resilient, they have determination, and they're also working hard to achieve their hopes and dreams and goals. But these young people have often experienced trauma and pain that no person should have to. Despite that, I see them pick themselves up, start again, and work to overcome challenges. They have new pride in themselves. You may not know that Sprott Shaw College has partnered with Covenant House to help more youth realize their dreams of higher education and graduating. Sprott Shaw has established a program for young people experiencing homelessness with a scholarship fund of up to a million dollars over the next two years. And as you know, access to education is a life-changing opportunity. And it is for the young people at Covenant House too. So you could be very proud of your school for this. And we are very grateful to CIBT Sprott Shaw for their incredible support. Today, five young people from Covenant House are attending Sprott Shaw and two more young people are in the process of enrolling. They are now at the start of their new beginning and a bright future. And graduates, this is your new beginning too. This is your fresh page, a next step. And you'll find that there are a lot of employers out there who are eager to hire you. This is your opportunity to go out into the world, make waves and challenge the status quo. The world needs your ideas. We need you in the workforce. We need you to volunteer. And we need you to help make a difference and change things for the better. And I know you will. I know you're well equipped to take on the challenges. And today you have already begun. Your future is wide open and I can't wait to see what you do next. Congratulations, class of 2021. Thank you very much, Krista. We have a number of notable guests who would like to offer their congratulations to you, our graduating class of 2021. I'd like to start with the Honorable John Horgan, Premier of British Columbia. Welcome, Premier Horgan. Greetings, everyone. Premier John Horgan here. And graduation ceremonies are normally a time of great pomp and circumstance and is a rite of passage for students around the world. It is an enormous milestone, and I want you to be proud of what you've been able to accomplish this extraordinary year. A global pandemic is not the ideal time to leave your schooling behind to start the next journey in your life, but that is exactly what's happening. 
All of us want to be there to celebrate your extraordinary accomplishment. I hope you recognize and acknowledge with your close family and your friends what you've been able to achieve. But this is just one step along the road to a greater and better lifetime as we see vaccination numbers increase and we put COVID-19 behind us. I firmly believe that your generation will unlock the challenges that others in the past have been grappling with for generations. I'm absolutely confident that this year's graduating class will be filled with doctors, with lawyers, with nurses, with carpenters, with poets, with athletes, with all of the diversity in our community. You are representing that in your class this year. I'm proud of you. Your families are proud of you. Your community is proud of you. Your province is proud of you. Enjoy this moment. Celebrate through the summer as we say goodbye to COVID. And when September comes, whether you're going on to post-secondary education, you're traveling or getting that career started, it's your road, it's your path, you've earned it, enjoy it. Happy graduation to everyone. Best of luck. Hi everyone, it's Sprout Shots, Rebecca Patterson with Kids Help Phone. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you so much and congratulations to the class of 2021. Thank you to everyone that participated in the Pink Shirt Day campaign this year. You raised well over $4,000. Thank you so much for that. That's amazing. That money will go towards programs and services geared to support kids in BC and across Canada, helping them navigate the challenges they are facing. These challenges have been amplified since COVID, and so is our demand uh, on our programs and services. To put it in perspective, Kids Help Phone in 2019 had 1.9 million interactions with kids across Canada. In 2020, we had 4.6 million, which is a significant increase. And it's in due in large part to community supporters like Spratshaw that were able to continue to grow and meet those needs as, as we navigate these challenges. Uh, we are committed to meeting these young kids where they are and how they wanna communicate. Whether that's texting, phone, live chat, we are there. And that's thanks to supporters like you, Sprotshaw. So thank you again and congratulations to the class of 2021. And we wish you a wonderful summer. Take care, be safe. Good morning, my name is Ken Popov. I am the mayor of this beautiful city called Chilliwack that is situated on the unceded territory of the Stalo people. You guys should be proud of your accomplishments in 2021. Now is the time to put your skills to work. We'd love you to stay local uh, with our community ever growing. We need people like yourselves to to put your newfound skill to work to make Chilliwack an even better place to hang your hat, if you will. So again, congratulations to all, a job well done, and maybe sometime in the future we can all get together and maybe have a conversation. If you have any questions, uh, comments, you can always send them to me at mayor at Chilliwack.com. Enjoy your day, guys. Being selected as valedictorian is an honor shared by a few and hoped by many. Your campus valedictorian this evening is Melissa Kimberly, graduating from the Special Education Teaching Assistant Program. Please welcome Melissa. Let me begin by expressing my gratitude to the staff of Sprottshaw College for this honor. It is my distinct privilege to speak on behalf of the graduating class of 2021. Esteemed guests, administration, staff, family, friends, and my fellow graduates, this is a day of celebration. Every last one of us should feel proud. Look at what we've accomplished and the circumstances under which we've done so. We've had to negotiate uncharted educational waters in the face of a global pandemic, and we've done it with determination, flexibility, and confidence. Many of us had to completely change how we learned midstream, pivoting from in-class learning to web meetings, dropping group projects and art or craft pieces, and moving to an almost entirely digital body of work. Our instructors had the unenviable task of taking the curriculum and rethinking the delivery method with only a week's lead time, 
and I'm beyond impressed with how easy they made it look. We, as a student body, are a diverse group, coming from different backgrounds, cultures, life stages, and experiences. The staff team at Sprotshaw was stellar, treating each of us with dignity and respect. From Colleen, discussing our options before we even signed the papers, to our instructors, who made us feel comfortable in the classroom and assured us that we could not only succeed, but excel. I'd particularly like to acknowledge my instructor, Sharla. I could not have asked for a better teacher, and I feel I wouldn't have been as successful without her instruction, guidance, and encouragement. Thank you. American motivational speaker Les Brown said, you are never too old to set another goal or dream another dream. This is the quote that I most connect to my time with Sprott Shaw. Many students attend community college after spending a significant amount of time in the workforce or raising a family. That was certainly the case for me. After two years of university, I entered the workforce and held a number of jobs over the next 28 years that varied from residential support worker to delivery driver to security guard to owning my own business as a house cleaner. I also had four children, which kept me very busy indeed. It was a series of workplace injuries that prompted me to look into returning to school. And after some research, Sprout Shaw was my top choice. Was I scared? <laughs> That's an understatement. But I believe that we experience our most meaningful growth when we stretch beyond our comfort zone. And looking around the classroom on my first day in the special education teaching assistant program, I saw the faces of over 20 other people that were stretching alongside me. And boy, did we stretch. Two weeks later, we were a bunch of disembodied heads in a web meeting, rolling with the changes and waiting to hear whether or not the next class would be taught in person. As it turned out, we would only attend the campus one more time to do our very COVID safe first aid training. As the weeks ticked by, classmates completed their coursework and began their practicum. By the end of my time at Sprott Shaw, there were only a handful of us left in the webinar. You may think that it would be difficult to make connections with classmates without the benefit of being in the classroom. But I can assure you that I've been welcomed warmly into every work site I've attended by my classmates. We are very much a cohesive team and it's always nice to see them. Many of the programs at Sprott Shaw are focused on the caring fields, from my own program, special education teaching assistant, to community support worker, early childhood educator, healthcare worker, practical nursing, and many others. We chose to enter these fields because we feel that there is nothing better than making a positive impact in the lives of others. As we embark on our new careers, it is vitally important to not lose sight of this noble calling and to keep it forefront in our minds as we go about the business of the day. It is the rudder that steers our ship and it is what will carry us on the difficult days. I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to thank the people who supported me while I pursued my education. To my husband, thank you for not only believing in me, but actively supporting my studies. Thanks for all the dinners you cooked so that I could study too. To my children, thank you for being my motivation to excel, to be a good example to you of what hard work and determination can achieve. To my friends, for their steadfast belief in me, and to my family for their wholesale support of my goals. I could not have done this without you. Graduation is a significant moment in our life, but it's not the destination. It is merely a waypoint on the journey. So on this, our graduation day, let us all take a moment to absorb the sweetness of our accomplishments, reflect back on what led us here, and look forward to see how the world has opened up before us as a result of our decision to grow change and create a better life for ourselves. Congratulations to the class of 2021.
thank you to your 2021 valedictorian. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the commencement ceremony. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you to family and friends for joining us this evening and for the support you have given them. Please now toss your caps. Thank you and good night.